when we begin to talk about codes with crawl spaces, uh, even if you had a code that would allow you to have a closed or sealed crawl space, you still have we still have an issue with jurisdiction and code officials. The code actually is swinging across the nation towards allowing uh, crawl spaces to not be vented at all. But again, it's very important to remember that when you don't vent one, you must deal with the the drainage. You've got to deal with ground source moisture. It's really important to take capillary and eliminate it through the foundation walls. All the things, the damp proofing, all the things we talked about are very, very important. The code in North Carolina has tried to take on and begin to segment those pieces so that a builder doesn't have to go to 10 different sections, it being referred to the insulation section, being referred to the damp proofing section, and so on and so forth, because it, it becomes a very complex, advanced foundation detail if you've got to run all over the code book. So it, it becomes difficult, but I think that in the next couple of years we'll see very, very clean, concise code covering of crawl spaces. In a climate like uh, Oklahoma, I think it would be really important to make doggone sure that, again, dry, so we've taken care of the moisture entry, good vapor retarder on the ground, sealed, and make doggone sure that you're insulating the foundation wall. Now, our research says that there's savings in both directions of insulating the foundation wall as opposed to insulating the floor. Uh, the foundation wall uh, has a, a small amount of penalty in the wintertime because the crawl space is colder. But in the summertime, it has a major savings. So I'd build a good one uh, choosing either either approach wouldn't bother me where the insulation was. I would prefer the foundation wall cost less money. It gives me two or three things because of the insulation up on the foundation wall more than likely is is a foil face foam that gives me my vapor retarder to stop the capillary through the wall, and my vapor retarder on the ground uh, stops the flow from the ground. So now I've got a like conditioned space, and. Uh, that that would work quite well in Oklahoma. Uh, when insulating the foundation wall in a crawl space, you, you obviously have two choices on the foundation wall. You could use outsulation on the outside or insulation on the inside. Uh, both are pretty mature processes, so that if you did insulation on the outside, similar to that that we use on basements with good damp proofing or waterproofing, and then a drainage board, which could also be the insulation. Those are pretty mature markets. However, when we insulate on the outside on a crawl space, there's often a good exposure of that insulation that's above grade. So covering that and protecting it from damage in the future is probably the larger issue. Uh, in either case where the insulation is placed, uh, maybe not so much so in Oklahoma, uh, but in, in many states, termites are a big issue. And as we begin to insulate the foundation wall in those climates where there's subterranean termites, it's really important to remember to give a termite view strip. There are lots of stakeholders in crawl spaces, and certainly one of them is the pest control operators, uh, fire issues. Uh, we already talked about the moisture issue, the insulating issue. There's lots of, of stakeholders, one of which is that, that pest control operator and our ability to detect and inspect subterranean entry into the building. Yeah, at the top of the foundation wall uh, so that we can, we can look at it. There's been some discussion with the pest control industry as to whether the, that view strip should be at the top or the bottom. And uh, the jury's still out. Uh, in, in building a good airtight, vapor tight, more straight, well insulated uh, uh, crawl space, then we have another whole issue because m most consumers who've ever lived in a crawl space use it as a storage area. Everything from gasoline cans and lawnmowers and th this now becomes a space that should be considered equal to the living room. So homeowners can actually make this uh, actually fail even though there was good construction practice. So a good homeowner's manual and what the crawl space strategy is all about is really, really important. 
Well, when, when we approach any foundation, uh, we cannot disconnect any part of the building, whether it's the foundation, the walls, the floors, the ceiling. All of it's a system, so to neglect one leaves us in a place where uh, our liability is at extreme risk. Uh, lawsuits, claims, and, and callbacks are knocking at the door whenever we leave any portion of that system. And we really do believe a building is a system. It should be healthy, safe, durable, comfortable, energy efficient, environmentally responsible. And to leave the foundation side out of that and less design and thought there than the other parts of the assembly is to really be saying to ourselves, we're not building a house as a system. Well, I, th I think that uh, over the last couple of years, I've, I've begun to look and watch what moves builders towards any different process. And uh, our largest expense, one of the largest expenses in our buildings is our warranty costs. Uh, uh, in the Sacramento paper, couple of months ago, there was an uh, article in there that uh, was written that said that there was $22 billion worth of construction defect in the year 2002. Well, if you took the 2003 starts and applied that $22 billion, that'd be $12,941 assigned to every house in the nation. So a large driver to go to quality is to reduce our cost. Uh, over the last five, six years, J.D. Powers has entered into the construction industry, which is a great driver for builders to begin to, to measure uh, customer satisfaction. Where callbacks and claims are high, customer satisfaction is low. So we have lots of incentive to reduce our callbacks and claims, increase customer satisfaction, increase the tolerance of the building, all of those make sense. Here's the most important. The largest building failures in new construction happen five to seven years out. So the houses we're building today will visit us five to seven years from now. So building quality into buildings protects our profit today.